The title of this presentation is The Drying Behavior of Cassava Chips. My name is Sahida Mujaffar, and this work was done as part of an MSc project at the Food Science and Technology Unit at the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of the West Indies, Trinidad and Tobago. In the Caribbean region, cassava is a staple in local diets. The freshly harvested grated cassava is used in a sweet dessert item and other snacks and the boiled tubers are normally eaten as a main starch in a meal or fried as chips. Uh, more recently, cassava roots are being dried and the dried pieces are blended into fine powders, commonly called flours. And this flour is used in bakery products such as breads and cakes as a gluten-free wheat flour substitute. Dry cassava pieces are the most common form in which cassava roots are marketed from exporting countries for use in food applications, livestock feeds, and even ethanol production. And the pieces are often referred to as chips, and they can be slices or irregular pieces, normally dried in the sun under prevailing open air conditions. Now, due to the importance of this commodity, standards and specifications have been developed for dried cassava chips with respect to the quality, compositional requirements, as well as the maximum moisture content, which is given as 13 to 14% wet basis. The disadvantages of sun drying include inconsistent drying due to weather dependence, long drying times of as much as six days, and exposure of the material to insects and pests. And an additional complication of sun drying is the lower drying efficiency due to the reflection of sunlight from the cassava chips, which are white in color. So oven drying of cassava roots has therefore been explored as an alternative to sun drying and due to the specific needs of the cassava processing industry to produce dried trips in a sustainable way. Interest in exporting dried cassava chips from the MX-59 variety uh, led to this research and this variety of cassava, the tubers are cylindrical with a light brown peel and the flesh is cream in color. However, there are no published works on the drying behavior of any of the local varieties of cassava. Previous research works have focused on the drying behavior of cassava slices, cubes, and irregular pieces in various ovens and drying dryers using hot air with or without pretreatments. Various aspects of the drying behavior, such as the moisture curves, drying rate curves, moisture ratio values, as well as the determination of the drying rate constants and modeling have been looked at as well. The objective of this work, therefore, was to investigate the thin layer drying of MX-59 cassava chips dried at 60 degrees Celsius in a mechanical oven. Specific objectives of this study included the generation of moisture curves and drying rate curves, determination of the drying rate constants, and modeling of the data using well-known thin layer models. For the production of chips, Fresh cassava roots were washed and manually peeled and cut into logs 10 to 15 centimeters in length. The logs were then cut in an in-house mechanical chipper, which consisted of rotating blades powered by a motor. And the sample piece size was then further reduced using a benchtop bowl chopper. And the final piece size achieved depended on the time spent in the bowl cutter. Preliminary experiments revealed that these two piece sizes, a larger and a smaller, were found to be suitable for these drying studies, so these were used. Drying of the chips was carried out in a drying cabinet set at 60 degrees Celsius and samples were placed onto wire mesh trays and dried under nat natural convection, that is less than 0.5 meters per second, until there was no apparent change in weight. Analyses included crude fiber content, uh, pH and moisture content, as well as the hydrogen and cyanide content of the dried samples. And the drying data was analyzed and models fit to the data. The experimental plan is given in this table here. 
Let's look at some results. Let's take a look first at the drying curves, which are plots of moisture content versus drying time. The initial moisture content of the samples uh, averaged about 61.06% on a wet basis. And the value, the moisture content values declined as expected as a function of drying time. With the smaller the size, the greater the decline. Equilibrium moisture content values averaged about 2% wet basis and these were these values were attained after 18 hours for the larger piece size and 14 hours for the smaller size. Drying to safe moisture content of 13% wet basis was achieved after about 7 hours for the larger piece size and 3 hours for the smaller piece size. Drying rate curves, which are plots of rate versus the average moisture content of the samples, show that the initial drying rates were higher for the smaller pieces. And for the larger piece size, there was an initial warm-up period seen here. And this highlights the issues associated with the drying of larger pieces of cassava, coupled with uh, low airflow conditions, which may be the case in most drying operations in the region. Moisture ratio values were determined using this relationship here and the moisture ratio values give an indication of the unaccomplished drying ratio based on the initial and equilibrium moisture values. Rate constants were obtained from the moisture ratio values and a higher drying rate constant was, was calculated for the smaller pieces and when, with respect to curve fitting the HE model best fit the data for the larger pieces while the page model best fit the data for the smaller pieces and these showed good agreement and this is shown in the plot as the dotted lines so the theoretical values closely match the experimental values. These models were then used together with the initial and final moisture content values of the samples obtained ex experimentally, experimentally to back calculate the actual moisture content of the samples during drying and these plots uh, show very good agreement between the experimental values seen here compared with the theoretical value which would be the straight line and we have very high uh, correlation coefficients. So this information can be used to set up a simple database which would enable an operator to be able to predict the moisture content of cassava chips at any time during the drying process. With respect to the cyanide content of the dried chips, uh, we see that it was well below the maximum acceptable limit which is 10 mg per kilogram dry weight and the value average 1.76. In conclusion, um, the drying of cassava chips was successfully carried out in a mechanical oven and the smaller chip size would be recommended for cassava for export of cassava chips based on the rapid drying rate. Curve fitting of the moisture ratio resulted in the application of models which could su successfully predict the extent of drying with respect to drying time as well as the moisture content of the cassava chips. For better process control, it's important that the process be studied for the exact type of cassava variety, the piece size that will be used and the specific drying conditions uh, as well as the type of dryer being used. So this type of information could allow a dryer operator to more closely monitor the drying process. So I have here just some important references that were used. And I would like to say thank you for your kind attention and I'll be happy to take any questions. Feel free to email or contact me and we can discuss further. Thank you.